Hello guys, this is Tinro. Welcome back to KSP Science Exploration Adventure. This is episode 3. It occurred to me that some of you may not be familiar with Stock Kerbal Space Program. And I wanted to kind of highlight the differences between what would be normal and what I'm doing. This is the stock tree. You can see it looks different than the engineering tech tree that I'm using. And I'd also normally have obtained twice as much science as I have right now. So my 58.2 science would be 116 science, and I'd have been able to unlock these six nodes. Now in my current game, I've actually unlocked seven nodes, but the difference is the number of parts that I get. So what am I kind of missing in my harder version that I'm doing than if I'd done it in stock? Well, here you can see at the very start, I'd have a command pod, I'd have these better parachutes that I haven't unlocked yet, and I'd have started out with a solid rocket booster. I would have gotten better solid rocket boosters, and more engines, you can see I'm getting science parts. I'd have slightly better engines, I would have unlocked nose cones, wings that can actually tilt, they're controllable, radial decouplers. Right here, I would have finally unlocked those. So, the only real thing that I have now that I wouldn't have is the Probodyne OKTO, so a better probe core. But, I, I'm up for the challenge, and it's making me build some interesting rockets. So let's go back to my game. So here we are back at our actual tech tree, and if you're very observant, you might notice there are nodes such as 4-bit computers, which is empty, and boats, which is also empty. I'm having a, a little bit of trouble with hide empty tech tree. I had to remove it to actually show the engineering tech tree after I reverted to a normal tech tree in a different save game for that segment I showed earlier for the different tech tree. I don't know why. But I've got 24.2 science and a whole lot of good things that I'd love to buy, but I can't get them all. Uh, better parachutes, I would love some better solar panels. Capacitors are also really interesting, bigger batteries. But the reality of the situation is, if you remember from my last video, when I get into space, I cut my engines, I lose my gimbal, I float around and I can't control where I want to go. If I had to throttle up my engines to turn around, I'd be skewing my orbit all over and wasting fuel. So I'm going to be going with the unmanned tech because it has a reaction wheel, even though it's really poor, as well as stability assist. So that that is going to make everything better. And then my current solar panel is a stack-mounted rover panel, so I can't just attach it to the side of my craft. So that's kind of obnoxious. That's why I'd like a better solar panel. And to attach that, I'm going to need something other than my strut, unless I wanted a huge strut like I've been segmenting my rockets with. So I'm going to go for the general construction for one of these small octo girders, the octo struts. And there are my landing legs. That looks like just more generic stuff. There are my nose cones. 15 science. I can definitely use some of those. Well, let's go build some rockets. So I'm going to be building bigger ships, and I'm going to be building heavier ships. You can see I've got 338,230 funds. Seems like a lot, right? It is not a lot of funds, especially since I'm not going to be getting any more of these easy contracts from Mission Control. You can see that just to upgrade the vehicle assembly building, 225,000. Okay. Launch pad, 50,000. Great. 63,000 left. I mean, I could also upgrade the tracking station. I need 150 for that. And I need to upgrade mission control for 75. I need to do both of those in order to start being able to create maneuver nodes and plan my actual traje uh, trajectories to encounter other planets or moons, bodies or whatever. So I'm going to have to be flying blind, old school, without that kind of insight into my craft until I get enough funds to start upgrading all that. Also, the astronaut complex, an additional 75000 to make some of my Kerbals can EVA outside of Ker uh, Gale. So let's get started. 
All right, now I'll unlock everything that I need or think that I'm going to want to use. All right, let's talk for a second now about balance. Here you can see I have batteries, two on two, either side that's balanced out, experiments, balanced out, balanced out. But then I get to this science experiment here. It costs 3,500 funds, and let's say that this probe is going into space that's never coming back. I don't really want to waste that. So let's say I put it on one side. Looking here at the center of mass, it looks pretty close to center. That's not going to be a problem, right? Well, let's turn on this other one. We've seen aerodynamic overlay. Let's look at the center of thrust. So if we line this up on the side, you can see that the center of thrust is a little more to the left than the center of mass. Now, on a tall rocket, that wouldn't be too much of a big deal, but on a small rocket like this, where we have this pug engine, that let's see how fast that goes. So, in space, max thrust, this would be 25 kilonewtons, and the craft itself only weighs 1.128 tons. So if this were in space, you'd think that it wouldn't really matter, but let's take a look at what happens. Now, as you can see, the probe core allows me to reorient my vessel, which I wouldn't be able to do without the reaction wheels. And I can also turn on stability assist so it'll maintain where I'm going. So I'm just going to aim for my program marker right here. And let's do full thrust and go. So as you can see, just that little bit of the center of thrust being offset from the center of mass is causing my craft to spin. And the small amount of reaction wheel force that I have isn't enough to compensate for that offset amount until I decrease to about a third thrust and then I can kind of control it. But I have to fight it the whole way. All right, here I have the Gale Surveyor. You can see I've got gimbling engines at the bottom, parachutes, because previously I have had shed stages just destroyed. This way, with stage recovery, if the parachutes would deploy and prevent it from just being destroyed at an excess speed when it lands, it will actually recover some of the funds, depending on how fast it's going and how far it is from the Space Center. You can see I've also pushed my uh, lift back a little. Also here, because this upper segment is going to still be in the atmosphere when I detach it. But I've got this cute little probe up top here, and I'm going to use the radar altimetry sensor to scan the height of carbon. And also get some high orbit science, because that's where I'm going to be. So I'll just get this built. So in order to survey a planet with a satellite, you need to be in a polar orbit because if you're just moving across the equator, you're only going to be able to scan things around the equator. But if you're going vertically from top to bottom, the planet or body will be spinning below you. So as you loop back around again and again and again, you'll actually be able to scan the entire surface. But if I was going, say, 22, 95 meters a second around the equator, how much fuel would it take for me to change my orbit from there? Well, if I adjust my normal like this, you can see that it starts pushing me out. I can counter that by also decreasing my speed in the retrograde. And if I just pitch it like this, so it's about 90 degrees, you can see I'm in a polar orbit. That'll cost over 3,300 meters a second. So that's more fuel than it would cost to launch the craft itself. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to set up a polar orbit as close as I can get from my launch. So as mentioned earlier, it's less expensive to go for a polar orbit from the start. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to head probably the 225 mark on my netball. 
because with Gale rotating below me, if I went straight for the 180, it would be slightly offset. So I'm going to maintain this for a little while, start throttling down so I don't go over 300 meters a second, so low in the atmosphere. Throttle up before I release. See if I can make sure my single engine is stable before I do too much. I'm at 21,000. I'm still increasing speed, so that's fine. My time to apoapsis is way high, so this isn't a very efficient launch. I anticipate this taking a while to circularize, so I'll go up to about 75,000. Well, actually I need to go up to 300,000 anyway. Because that'll be an optimal distance from the planet. So hopefully I have enough fuel. That's pretty close to polar. I think that this orbit might be perfect. You can see that green line. That's my connection to the space center. There's multiple spots on the surface that it can connect to. With my current probe core, I can connect to the space center with my, net, my uh, current tech up to 3.16 million meters. So if I went beyond that, I would lose control of my craft. So I got 72.6% of that stage because of the distance from where it fell because they have to go collect it. So I'm getting some funds back from those earlier stages. But I really need science. So high over Gale space, six science. Measuring the temperature of space appears to be quite impossible as there is no matter around to be either hot or cold except the spacecraft and the thermometer itself. This is probably going to give the R&D guys something to think about for a while. And I can actually transmit. I put a... Uh, I have this blinking antenna, which means that I could go 31 million meters away. Let's also log some pressure. Be zero. It's a vacuum. That happens a lot. Now I'll start getting some funds for this stuff. So up to fifty-two thousand. But what the real meat and potatoes is going to be is this. Start radar scan. Point it at Gale for effect, even though it doesn't really matter. Possibly rotate myself so my solar panels are actually giving me electric charge. Now, if I look at the map view, you can see the beam. That's how much I'm effectively scanning. So when I go across the poles, if I clip the center of the pole, that means that my orbit is fine, and I think that it probably will be. If I was in an elliptical orbit, I would only ever see the middle of the planet. But because the planet spins below me, if I'm in a polar orbit, I'll continue to scan strips of it until I scan it all. And you can kind of see this in ScanSat, which is what this is for. I've scanned this small patch here. If I time warp a little, you can see that I'm moving up 
at an angle because it's spinning below me, and then I'll wrap back down and make large s shaped sweeping motions. Now, I don't want to waste time doing... Well, I kind of wanted to launch another craft, but I'm not sure I'll be able to. I think that I might be able to get some funds from somewhere, though. I'll go to the Space Center. Now, if I go to the administration building, since this is really what I want to do, I want to go to IOTA. And I must not have orbited IOTA, so I, I want to do this earlier. But this gives me an advance of 100,000 funds. I'll just have a big penalty, and I'll get 80% less funds for milestones in other locations, which will probably include Gale, but... That's okay. I want to do a flyby. So I'll accept this. Now, I'll probably need to unlock some more things. Let's see. Fuel tanks? No. I haven't been using the LV T30 Reliant very much because it's a high thrust, but it doesn't have gimbal. So I haven't been using it, but I think I'll probably need to for what I'm planning. So I'll purchase this. Let's see what else is there. I don't have radial decouplers, so I'm going to need something to push stages I want to shed away from my craft. This weighs 0 .004, so it's only four times as heavy for... Looks like it's four of those anyway, so I'll just unlock that anyways. So I'll use that strut. I think that might be all that I really need, with the exception of my science lab. This, I could launch this, but it weighs four tons. This is one ton less, so I'll get that. Now to just build something that will get the mobile processing lab into orbit so I can have some Kerbals up there. All right, here we have the space valve, total Delta V up here at the top. Potential of 7,335. That would be in a vacuum, so not all of that is going to come through. But what I've done is I have this lower stage. I'm using radial decouplers that I'm going to jettison with these attached on the side. So I'll drop these are crossed over so that these four are on the bottom, and then these four are crossed in between so I can shed them one at a time. Back. So I'm using eight to start off of these larger LV T30s for more thrust, and I'm getting gimbal from a single one in the center, so I can kind of control my direction, but I think for the most part with all this weight, I'll primarily just be trying to go up, and of course parachutes to try to recover some funds from that, and then this really, really long dart up here. There's so much weight up here that I really need to push the lift back so I get more drag so I can try and get this to orbit because this is going to have to go through the upper part of the atmosphere. And then up here, I have a probe with seats on it so I can have my Kerbals go out because I'm going to try to send Kerbals around IOTA. See so how long this is going to take. 24 days. And it will cause... I can afford that. And then I have that much left. In order to let my Kerbals out, I need to upgrade this. And I don't have enough money, so I'll have to come back to that later. Funds are getting a little tight. Now, the reason I did that was because since it's going to take so long to build the ship, I figured I could fly this and time warp. Let's change the time for these altitudes. These should be filling in. I don't 
It looks like I'm just barely clipping the center, so I'm off by a little, but all of these should be filling in as I pass through them again. 99.8, 99.9. Hopefully this is worth a lot of science. All right, scanning's done. Let's put this away. Analyze the data. 7.5 science. I kind of expected more, but I'll transmit it. Now let's look at this big map. Um, I guess resetting the projection is causing it to refresh. I'll turn off my orbit. So at the bottom over here, you can see the different heights. So this is zero meters. Negative 500 apparently is the water. 500. It looks like the low resolution is only in 500 meter increments. That's pretty bad. This white is 1,000, was that 1,500, 2,000? This is a really tall mountain over here. Um, so doesn't tell me where the biomes are either. Can't wait to get that. So there's a mountain over here that's 2,000. I'll have to explore these later. The reason I haven't been exploring Gale is because I only have the two damn experiments. And if I'm going to be doing something like that, I want more for my effort. All right, so I'm going to deorbit this for some funds. up to 27 science, so I've got more than I started with. 89,000 funds, that's good. As you can see, the space center is now underwater. Atmo dart debris? Huh. I'll recover that, I guess. That's probably from when I crashed uh, 777 meters above the ground in the dark. But this is underwater, that's fine, I don't really care, except for the fact I can't see the building I want to upgrade. There we go. Now I can EVA in space. So this mission better be successful, otherwise I'm going to be dirt poor. And I'll just time warp to the completion of this ship. There she be! And here we have the end of this episode. Will this behemoth craft even make it into orbit with the crappy technology that we currently have? I don't know. Will Bob and Valentina make it to IOTA? Let's find out. We'll see you next time. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.